before your throne of grace I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy in worship and wonder I behold your face singing what a faithful God have I what a faithful Dear friends, welcome to yet another virtual Café Praise. Each Sunday over lockdown, Simon has been working hard along with Nikki, gathering in the information, the readings, the songs, so that we can all enjoy a service virtually. Today we also offer a special welcome to those that are going to hear the service live uh, in the grounds of our beautiful church. Take care and stay safe. We gather. Come to the God who knows us, to the God who created our being, to the God who knows our frailty, to the God who loves and cherishes us beyond measure. Come as you are and worship God. Lord God, help us to understand how good it feels to forgive and to be forgiven. Help us to remember that you forgive us again and again. Amen. Our desire, our need, our yearning draws us together to worship God. Unexplainable, unimaginable, unbelievable, incomprehensible love pulls at our heartstrings tugs at our emotions, turns our eyes beyond the seeing, all-encompassing God, just as we are, we come. Amen.
The first reading is from Romans chapter 14, reading verses 1 to 12. Welcome with open arms, fellow believers, who don't see things the way you do. And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong in opinions, but weak in the faith department. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. For instance, a person who has been around for a while might well be convinced that he can eat anything on the table, while another, with a different background, might assume he should only be a vegetarian and eat accordingly. But since both are guests at Christ's table, wouldn't it be terribly rude if they failed to criticising what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned, God can handle that without your help. Or say, one person thinks that some days should be set aside as holy, and another thinks that each day is pretty much like any other. There are good reasons either way. So, each person is free to follow the convictions of conscience. What's important in all this is that if you keep a holy day, keep it for God's sake. If you eat meat, eat it to the glory of God and thank God for prime rib. If you're a vegetarian, eat vegetables to the glory of God and thank God for broccoli. None of us are permitted to insist on our own way in these matters. It's God we are answerable to, all the way from life to death and everything in between, not each other. That's why Jesus lived and died and then lived again, so that he could be our master across the entire range of life and death and free us from the petty tyrannies of each other. So where does that leave you when you criticise a brother? And where does that leave you when you condescend to a sister? I'd say it leaves you looking pretty silly or worse. Eventually, we're all going to end up kneeling side by side in the place of judgment facing God. Your critical and condescending ways aren't going to improve your position there one bit. Read it for yourself in scripture. As I live and breathe, God says, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will tell the honest truth that I and only I am God. So tend to your knitting. You've got your hands full, just taking care of your own life before God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second reading is Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. The parable of the unforgiving servant. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat. He said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into the prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you who do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning to you all. Michael from Trohadin Church here. Have you ever been addressed in this way before in an act of worship? I expect not. So I hope you are sitting comfortably as I am. Then I will begin. Well, our friend Peter is at it again, speaking before engaging his mind. And yet, on this occasion, it may be a good thing for his impetuosity draws from Jesus teaching which is immortal and perhaps an aspect of his teaching which causes us the greatest difficulty and perhaps embarrassment. 
The gospel reading is to do with that age-old topic of forgiveness, something we are all guilty of having trouble with at the best of times. Peter asked Jesus how often he ought to forgive someone, and Peter answers his own question by suggesting that he should forgive seven times. Now, the Jewish teaching was that a person ought to forgive three times. So I can imagine Peter was expecting a few brownie points and to be warmly applauded by Jesus for his offer. But Jesus' answer must have knocked Peter off his perch pretty quickly when he said that we must forgive 70 times seven. In other words, there is no limit to forgiveness. This parable teaches certain lessons which Jesus never tired of teaching. The primary one being, and indeed it runs through the whole New Testament, we must forgive in order to be forgiven. And Jesus emphasizes the absolute need for forgiveness in this parable today about the two debts. Jesus is certainly pushing the ridiculous to new boundaries with his comparison. But no more ridiculous than an unforgiving heart, I say. The first servant owed his master 10,000 talents. Now a talent in Jesus' day was the equivalent of 15 years wages. So it is an incredible debt, perhaps something as incredible as our national debt these COVID times. The debt which the fellow servant owed was a trifling few bob, a week's wages at the most. But the man up to his neck in debt could not bring himself to forgive the man owing a few bob. And this attitude is the microcosm of the world's problems. For out of an unforgiving heart grows anger and hatred. And Jesus knew that. Martin Luther King said, Hate is a boomerang that circles back and hurts you. We ministers of religion are often flawed by the attitudes and reactions of our parishioners. None more so than when families have fallen out over something or other. And as in today's gospel, it's usually over money. And the hatred and bitterness can go very deep and last for many, many years, even through death itself. And there is nothing more heartbreaking for a vicar to preside at a funeral of such families. And when it is between parents and children, double is the tragedy. You feel like knocking their heads together and shout about all the wasted years and the opportunities of love and care missed, never to be retrieved. Forgiveness is important, not just for the perpetrator, but for the victim, helping them to break away from anger and bitterness, which could freeze them in the past and destroy their hope in the future. And today's gospel shows how important it is for us Christians of all people to practice it. Forgiveness is primarily about our feelings. It is an act of the will, a choice which affects how we behave. We may well struggle with neg negative feelings and even after forgiving someone, but God is concerned with our willingness in this, as in all things, to genuinely try. Yes, the contrast between the debts is mind-boggling. But what Jesus is trying to impress on us is that nothing in any way compares with what we have done to God. And if God has forgiven us for what we have done to him, we must forgive others any wrongdoing they have done to us. 
Nothing that we have to forgive can even faintly or remotely compare with what we have been forgiven by God. Of course, it is not always easy. Hurts can run deep. But a genuine heartfelt effort to forgive can influence how we take those memories into the future, preventing them consuming us with hatred and vindictiveness. For Jesus, forgiveness and our participation in it are fundamental signs of the kingdom of God. By practicing forgiveness, we show that we fully understand how much God has loved and forgiven us. And through it, we can know the joy of working with him to pass on the grace we have experienced to others. The gospel ends with the words, from your heart. A superficial tongue in cheek, I forgive you, usually causes further acrimony in the near future. But when we forgive from the depth of our hearts, we are on the way to a healing process, which will be blessed by God and cheer us on our way. My mother aunt, an arwydd o deyrnas ddiw, ac mae dyw yn ein gallu iogi i chwarae rhan weithredol yn ei deyrnas, pan fyddw yn trwy fyddai ant, yn trosglwyddo'r gras a gawsom ein hunen. Boed bendith dyw ar noch i gyd. Amen. us, O oh God, how to treat you, how to know you, how to love you, how to learn of you, how to do as you would have us do. Teach us above all how to show those same things to those around us and those whose lives meet ours, those who live alongside us each day and those who flit briefly by. Amen. A spirit you do, God is spirit, and we who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you always. Peace be with you. Can never do a vorgida chiwos. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. 
peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Mum. And peace be with you, my dear. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Me with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Nicola. Peace be with you, Alan. And, and also, also with, with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace be with you, Mum. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. created our being, to the God who knows our frailties, to the God who loves and cherishes us beyond measure. Come as you are and worship God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus' parables inspire us to pray for those who forgive us, for big and small, 
for those who do not forgive no matter what, for those who do not know how to forgive, for those who do not want to forgive, and for those who have not been forgiven, God of forgiveness for all we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Joanna of St. David, John our Archbishop, and Archdeacon Paul Magnus, and for all priests under her care. We pray for the LMA, Father Neil Hook, and for our church wardens under his care. We pray for our parishes of Wisson, Walton East, and Slough Haddon, and that our Lord will look favourably upon us and grant us peace. May the cross of Christ give you hope May the cross of Christ give you joy. May the cross of Christ give you confidence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are brought low in this time of uncertainty and uh, distress, that we may rejoice knowing that nothing can separate us from the love in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, as we remember those who are working to keep things going, those working in the NHS and those around us helping to keep things working, those keeping our streets clean and collecting our rubbish, and harvesting, delivering and selling food in our shops. And the postmen who deliver our mail. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time together. Whatever happens this week, help us to keep following you in our faith and keep our roots Firmly planted in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for the many blessings we have received at God's hand. May we always be grateful and never forget to say thank you to our Lord Jesus. Give us courage and hope for the future of our churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sometimes, O oh God, I wish I was on my own, not troubled and disturbed by those around me, not jostled and hustled in this way and that way, but left to my own devices. But I am not me. I am part of a community which I live. Give me patience with those around me. Give me love and compassion for those in need. And give me understanding for those who are different from me. And give me above all else a yearning to do your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And a personal prayer for my family. Come Holy Spirit, fill my home with peace. Come Holy Spirit, fill my heart with love. Come Holy Spirit, fill my life with your power. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And uh, a prayer for um, St. Mary Ignatius. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wound, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. 
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake, the sake of, of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. We give thanks. God of love and grace beyond our telling, we bring our thankful hearts to you, acknowledging that without you we are nothing, and with you we can be so much more. Thankful that you care for us and love us beyond measure, that you have endless patience with us, that you teach us time and time again what it is to be committed to you and your way. Thankful that you reveal yourself to us in myriad ways, to inspire us and evoke within us a heartfelt response. Thankful that while all this is for everyone, we'll come to you and accept you. It is for me, for me, and may I know it deep within, with overflowing hearts, hear our prayer. Amen. For such great love we give you thanks with the angels and saints as they praise you and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ein tader hwn oed yn y nefoedd, sang teider de nhw, deled y deyrnas, gwneler dy wyllus, megis yn y nef, felly ar y ddau ar hefyd. Darwyn ni heddiw ein bara beunyddiol, a maddau ni ein dylydion, fel maddau yw'n unnau i'n dyledwyr. Ac nac ar wain ni brofedigaeth, oedd e'r gwared ni rhagdrwg, cynnes e'r ti yw'r deyrnas a'r gallu a'r gogoniant. A nós hoy soyd. Amen. Deiwch gyda fi, draw i di fy'n had, draw i di fy'n had, draw i di fy'n had. Deiwch gyda fi, draw i di fy'n had, se gan lawer. Draw i di fy'n had, draw i di fy'n had, draw i di fy'n had. Nid yw'r ffordd yn bell, draw i di fy'n had, se gawn lawen hai. Yma lle i bawb, draw yn hi fy'n had. Draw yn hi fy'n had, draw yn hi fy'n had, yma lle i bawb, draw yn hi fy'n had, gwnnw yn lawen hai. Cyddwn oll yn rhydd, draw yn hi fy'n had. Draw yn hi fy'n had, draw yn hi fy'n had. Byddwn oll yn rhydd, draw yn hi fy'n had, se gawn lawen hai. Cawn ei rodion rhad, draw yn hi fy'n had. Draw yn hi fy'n had, draw yn hi fy'n had. Cawn ei roddion rhad, draw yn hi fy'n had, se gan lawen hai. Ies i glistio'r ffordd, draw i di fy'n had. Draw i di fy'n had, draw i di fy'n had. Ies i glistio'r ffordd, draw i di fy'n had, se gawn lawen hai. Deiwch gyda ni, draw i di fy'n had, draw i di fy'n had, draw i di fy'n had. Deiwch gyda mi, draw i di fy'n had, se gawn lawen hai. We go out into a world of noise and confusion, into a world that bewilders and even bemuses us at times, into a world of delight and regret into a world of hope and fear, into a world that is ever-changing. We go with the message of an unchanging God who gave us all that we might live life to the best of our ability. God of all, go with us and within us, this and every day. Amen. Help us, Lord, to always remember to forgive as you forgive us, again and again and forever. Amen. Tang nefydd diw sydd i'w chlaw pob deall, a gadwaith calonnau a chmyddoliau 
Angwibodaitha Chariadiu, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, remain with you and those you love wherever they may be, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.